Hi, Eric Lenask here in the TMC Newsroom, and joining me on our program today is uh, Rich Marcia. Rich is the Marketing Director at CSI. Rich, good morning. Thanks for joining me. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, you know, some pretty exciting stuff coming out uh, from CSI. You've just, uh, just announced the latest version of your Virtual Observer product. Tell me a little bit about what's new in uh, VO4. Virtual Observer 4.0, you know, wasn't an overnight uh, work, work. It was a work in progress for the last few years. We really wanted to make sure we got all the technologies <coughs> correct and, and wanted to make sure that the web version came out with all of the, the features that we had in our client server version. It's important to allow our current customers not to miss anything in using it, and we've achieved that. It's it's really f a phenomenal piece of software and it's extremely easy to use. So the transition for current customers is going to be relatively easy. Um, now they have the ability to go out and use Virtual Observer from any web browser uh, that has internet connection and they can log in with their credentials. If they have the proper permissions, they can then go and play back calls, score calls, and use Virtual Observer it's just as if they had the old client server version, except now it's on the web. So why did you feel it was necessary to create a, uh, a web-based product? It's important these days to be able to do that. It has a big impact on IT costs. IT staff no longer have to be tasked with going out and installing and reinstalling for, with updates uh, client software. Um, if you in the previous incarnation of Virtual Observer in 3.0, you had to install the client software for anybody who had playback rights. Um, now you don't have to do that. The task is gone because everybody's using the web version, so you've always got the latest and greatest version. So the software is deployed entirely off-premises uh, uh, in, in, on your servers, uh, in a third-party cloud, or in, in my data center? Which, which is it going to be? It's in, in your on-premise data center. Okay. It's not cloud-based. Um, it's it's web-based from the player end, from the browser. Is the cloud something that you're considering for the future? Oh, of course. Everything everything seems to be moving toward the cloud. And with our customers, no, they're not really ready to give their data to the cloud yet. You know, But when they're ready, we'll be ready. We, we've shown with our innovations over time that We'll bring it to our audience and to our customer base when technology becomes affordable and, and there, there's less mistakes to be made in innovating. The, um, the cloud will come to Virtual Observer, just not yet. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned costs and cost, uh, cost efficiencies. One of the things that uh, you mentioned previously is a very low total cost of ownership with the Virtual Observer product. Tell me how you achieved that. Sure. Um, well, we were one of the first call recording vendors to ever decide to give our current customers the latest and greatest versions of the software for free. We always upgrade everybody to the latest version, keep them on the current version so that everybody is on, on the, everybody has a similar um, environment with which to be supported and to not have to worry about paying upgrade fees where they're basically doing a rebuy. That, that doesn't exist with Virtual Observer. Our customers are brought forward with a nominal professional service fee just to update their servers. That's one of the biggest reasons there's a low cost of ownership and also a big reason why we have a high customer retention rate. How big of a differentiator in the market is that for CSI? It, it's a big differentiator. Like I say, we were one of the first, and there's been some follow the leaders that have uh, gone along and, and done that. And you know, we'll kind of take credit for that. It's a good thing to to be able to not have to charge your customers basically and essentially a rebuy when you're going to upgrade to the next version. Some vendors still do that. But we don't, and like so some of our competitors have followed suit. I think whether you talk about the uh, consumer space or the business space, uh, having to rebuy when you uh, upgrade versions is, is uh, 
something nobody wants to do. No, and you really shouldn't have to, especially if it's recent, if it's that quick. I've heard one vendor we replaced recently where within a year, their customers had to upgrade and essentially pay the same amount they paid for the original version that they purchased. Wow, amazing. I think one of the things uh, it makes sense to talk about when we talk about call recording is also what you're seeing happening in terms of uh, the speech analytics. Speech analytics is it's huge. Everybody seems to have their own flavor of speech now. You know, we've chosen to go the route of the phonetics-based speech, and we're able to index calls immediately as they come off the recorder. Therefore, our customers are going to have the ability to um, to search their index calls immediately after the call's been recorded and be able to leverage that data into some real-time reporting that shows them, for example, the our phonetic-based um, discovery is, is really great. It gives you a word cloud that will break down, for example, how many times a competitor's name has been mentioned in a call. So you can, the, the possibilities are endless for the types of reports you can create. And the fact that you get the data in real time is huge. Um, I think that uh, when you add speech analytics onto the recording uh, capabilities, that really takes a, a call recording solution to the next level, more than yeah. just simple recording. It basically does the listening for you, so you're immediately able to capture back some of the time you would have normally spent scoring calls, listening to calls, searching to find specific calls. We have, we have an automatic scoring system with our speech analytics that will automatically go through a script and evaluate how your, your agents did on the call in real time. So if you take a thousand calls in a day, you're going to have a thousand scored calls in a day with our speech software. I think also adding to that conversation piece earlier about total cost of ownership, just saving so much time uh, on, on, the, uh, on the management yeah, or on the huge. admin side. Yeah, it's huge. What can we look forward to from uh, CSI in the coming uh, months? Well, we're going to be, as I said before, the first release of the web version is really bring all of the features we had in our system forward. Next, you're going to be seeing a whole slew of features that are enhancements beyond what we had in, in Virtual Observer 3.0. And that they're going to be focused on more supervisor functions, agent functions, um, more reporting. The dashboards in, in the new system are entirely new and really are going to be um, something I'd like to show. Well, I see, you know, certainly look forward to seeing more of that, uh, seeing some of this stuff in action. Sounds uh, really exciting, and, and uh, uh, just knowing what is, uh, how client reaction has typically been to uh, lowering administrative uh, uh, opportunities and uh, obviously costs as well. Uh, you know, the web-based version is certain to, I'm absolutely certain it's going to be uh, well-received by your uh, audience. There's several factors that contribute to the low cost of ownership and reducing the footprint. I mean, the fact that a lot of the servers that are going out there now are, are virtual, we're able to save customers' costs on hardware. Um, a lot of the integrations that are coming out now with, um, we've got an, a specific Avaya integration called DMCC, which is widely known. We do quite a, quite a bit with that. Um, it doesn't involve recording hardware, so that's eliminated from the equation. Same with uh, Cisco Active Recording. Um, Mitel has an active recording. And we've pursued all of, the, all of the integrations that are possible to eliminate that cost from the customers. And, and, um, and we'll continue to, to push forward on breaking down some of those costs and eliminating them from, from customers where possible. Well, knowing customers, uh, they will uh, be very appreciative of that. 
I'm Merrick Linask. I've been here in the TMC newsroom with CSI's Rich Marcia. Rich, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.